Um, so here, okay. Here's the deal. I, I gotta, I gotta mention this. Um, I, I'm wearing earrings, um, and I, I, I've, I've, I've been approached about this a number of times today. <clears throat> Some people have been friendly about it. Others um, that live with me have not. Um, but here's the deal. Uh, I, I'm wearing earrings because we're talking about older brothers today. So how many of you in the room are an, are an older sibling, an older brother, or you are an older sister? Uh, yeah, yeah. How many of you, are, if you have multiple siblings, are like the oldest one? A few of us, right? Yeah, so how many of us then are blessed, and I do mean blessed, to be the younger sibling? Right? It's a good thing. Hey, hey, it's a good thing. <laughs> so, and th- this, is, is, ah, this is where my earrings come in. So back in 1989, around there, my older brother got an earring. He got one. He was in a, this is him, I love, this is his, this is his yearbook picture, I scanned it last night. This is, um, it, this is from, this is, he was in, he was, he was, he was in a lot of bands. One, it was one, I remember one was Cloud Nine, and he was in Student Body, and then he was even, like, he was so cool, they were, when he was 17, he was in old guy bands, and so they were, they were sneaking him into bars to play keyboards for him, but he's got the thing, right? You could see he's like, looking off, he's got the hair going in back, like you could just see an earring would fit, right? He's like, that's all I need to complete the look is just one earring on my ear, and I am rock and roll at this point, and so he got his ear pierced, and he did the thing, like in my town, you went to the dog shed. It was a hot hamburger, or hot dogs and, and coke, and if you wanted people to see you, you went there, and then they would see you, and then you would say, I have been seen, and then you would go home. And so that's what he did. He was seen with his earring, and then he went home. And he, he, we'd go in the back door. When, at my house, you'd go in the back door. And if you came in after working hours, my dad would be sitting at the, at the kitchen table reading the newspaper and drinking Diet Coke every day, like clockwork. That is what would happen. And so my brother walks in um, the kitchen. And if you know my dad, then you would know how, how he works. And so my brother walks in the kitchen, and my dad looks up from the paper, nods, and then looks down and says, well, how was your day, son? And my brother's playing it cool. He's like, it's good, Dad. And my dad says, anything exciting? Nope, just a day, Dad. Huh. And then there's the pause. <laughs> when he says, you know, I discovered something funny about your car today, son. And my brother's like, yeah, apparently there was something different about that model of Ford. It seems that the metal in your earring will interfere with the car's ignition. And I'm pretty sure that as long as that earring is in your ear, your car is not going to start. <laughs> Without a word, my brother <laughs> takes the earring out, <laughs> puts it on the kitchen table, and wanders aimlessly away, very much less rock and roll than he had been <laughs> a minute or two ago. So flash forward to the early 90s, and I'm about his age, and, and by then, one earring has become two, if you're cool. And I've been thinking about trying my luck at being cool. I've never been lucky with being cool. But I, I, I knew I'm the younger bl- brother, <laughs> and I know the blessing of being the younger brother. And I was also just cast as Antonio in Shakespeare's play Twelfth Night. And Antonio, if you don't know, he is the sea captain in that play. And sea captains have earrings, right? So I go to Walmart, where all sensible people go. <laughs> and I get my ears pierced. This is me in the back, in the, in the, in the room, with my long piratey hair. And you can see a little bling on, on my earring in the, in the, in the, um, in the dressing room at, at the theater. And the first time my dad sees me, he raises his eyebrow. He's trying to, I know he's like, okay, what dry comment am I going to come up with (laughs) to get that thing out my kid's ear? But I was wise, and I spoke first. And I said, Dad, it's for a play. I'm a pirate. And he paused. I caught him off guard. (laughs) And he said, huh. And his eyebrow went back down, and that was the end of it. My car started just fine. (laughs) The holes, by the way, they're still there. Like 25 years later, I'm still holy. (laughs) And I still need to make up excuses to wear them. So yesterday, I was going to wear them. 
and the kids said, you're gross. And, <laughs> and, and Liz, she said, I look like Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> and so I told them, it's for a sermon. I'm a pastor. <laughs> and my car started just fine this morning. <laughs> and I'm here. And besides, like these ones, these have the Lord's Prayer written on them. At least I think so. I'm, now I'm too old to actually read print that small, but it said it had the Lord's Prayer on them. But, but as far as my older brother goes, the whole earring thing, like that was just one more reason for him to utter the rallying cry of older siblings throughout human history, which is, it's not fair, <laughs> right? How many of you have said in your life, this is not fair? fair, <laughs> right? Well, here's your chance to say it again. Older siblings and only older siblings in the room on the count of three. One, two, three. It's not fair. You sound like you have experienced this quite a bit. <laughs> it's not fair. And that's the blessing of birth order. There's a blessing to birth order. So today, though, we're going to continue our Easter sermon series. We've been talking about the parable of the prodigal son, and last week we talked about what it meant to be the younger brother, right? And how lost things, in the kingdom of God, lost things have a habit of being what? Found. Found. When the kingdom of God comes near, lost things, lost people have a habit of being found. Well, this week we're going to be talking about the older brother and the unfairness of some people being found, <laughs> and some things being found. The prodigal, you might remember this story, the prodigal younger brother has returned, and the father has opened his arms to welcome him back, given him new clothes, the best clothes, and given him a party to end all parties. And needless to say, this did not sit well <laughs> with the older brother. And so this is Luke chapter 15. This is where the older brother has his moment to not quite, not quite shine. But this is Luke 15, 25 through 32. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, the elder son, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he called one of his slaves and he asked the slave, what's going on in the house? The slave replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. And then... The older brother became angry and refused to go in. And his father, he came out and he began to plead with his older brother, come in. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you. I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, who killed, you killed the fatted calf for him, the best food. Then the father said to the son, son, you're, you're always with me. And all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead. He has come to life. He was lost. And he has been what? Found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, thank you for this word. Thank you for this reminder. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always giving to us. So we pray today that you would give each of us a word. You made us. You know us. You know what we need to hear. And so may we each of us hear from you today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That wasn't fair, what I just read right there. Right? Actually, no, wait. This is an epic, it's not fair moment. This is like a biblical, it's not fair moment. We need an exclamation point. Jamie, can you give us an ex Look at that. It's like we planned it. It's not fair. And it isn't. You can't argue. Like, the older brother has done everything that was asked of him. Hayden spent his whole life following the rules, right? Yeah. 
done what was expected. He towed the line. He never disobeyed. He lived to help his father, right? Right, yes, that's the right answer. And what has he gotten to show for it? Nothing. Not even a goat, Dad. <laughs> Not even a young goat that I can have a feast with my friends. Just touching any chords with older siblings in the room. What have I gotten lately? <laughs> and what do you do for them? Right? I'm just one. They're twins and they get more than me, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> but the younger brother, I mean, he's like a walking Steve Miller song, right? He took the money and ran, literally. Daddy ran out on us. He left me with more work. He's wasting his inheritance, your money, on wine and women. He's living it up until there's nothing left. Wasting all that money with little thought of, for anyone. But who? Himself. And then he has the nerve when he's out of cash to come back here, waltzing in, and only for you to throw him a party? Dress him in your best clothes? Slaughter the fatted calf for him? He gets the best of the best. Hayden didn't even get a goat. You gotta be kidding. I'm a younger brother. We get, a, we get away with stuff like that. <laughs> this is not fair. It's not fair. It isn't. It's grace. And that's the thing. Grace Grace isn't fair. Grace is not fair. Grace is the unearned, undetermined, deserved, unmerited favor of God. Grace is not fair, and I'm so thankful it ain't. <laughs> because there's nothing you can do to earn God's love for you. No matter how many rules you follow, there's nothing you can do to deserve it, no matter how many invitations to a good time you turn down. It's unmerited. It doesn't matter if you're the firstborn or the lastborn, the most or the least, the best or the worst. John, grace ain't no merit badge <laughs> that you can wear proudly. All adds up to the fact that grace Grace isn't fair. Thank God. Because if grace were fair, if grace were something you might deserve, how many of us do we think we would deserve God's grace, God's favor, God's sacrificial love for us? Not, certainly not me. How many of us feel like, yeah, I have earned eternal life. It's my due for what I have done. But how often do we, like do you and I, the in crowd, the ones who are already home, the, 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 the older brothers, the, the Pharisees, how often do we try to set limits to God's grace? We set, we set prerequisites and preconditions for other people to experience the grace that I have. There's not enough grace, I'm sorry for, for you if you do that. And there's not enough grace for her if she lives like that. And there's not enough grace for him. And there's not enough grace for them. I mean, really, come on, right? Grace can only get you so far. At the end of the day, you do have to earn it, right? And, and they haven't earned it. You haven't earned it. Because if there's no end to God's grace, I mean, that's not fair. Like, surely there's some boundaries we can't cross. Otherwise, what's the point of doing the right thing? Like, why bother even trying to follow Jesus if I can live it up and spend it all like the younger brother and still get in? What benefit is there for me? There's this uh, story in the book of Acts. It involves a, a, a bunch of guys who, likely, who were likely there when Jesus told this parable of the prodigal son come home. I mean, it probably the, the, it involves more than one of the sit sinners that was sitting and eating with Jesus that upset the Pharisees. Actually, this, this, this story in Acts probably involves more than one prodigal son who had come home when the kingdom came near and Jesus walked the earth. Peter, you all know, maybe you know Peter. Peter was the one who denied knowing Jesus when things got tough, right? And then by the unmerited grace of God, he became the rock on which the church was built. Well, Peter was off in Joppa, 
and, and had this crazy dream about all kinds of foods he wasn't supposed to eat, like ho-hos and, and ding-dongs and, 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 and zebra cake. <laughs> well, zebra cakes. He was dreaming about them, and they were just laid out before him, and he's like, God, I know I ain't supposed to eat these. And God said, no, it's cool, man. Did you not know that I made ding-dongs and ho-hos and zebra cakes? And nothing I make is, is, is bad. So you can eat. And then Peter wakes up, and these guys show up at his door, and they're like, hey, Peter, um, we got a friend back in Caesarea. It's actually, he's our master. It's Cornelius, and he wants to invite you to dinner. And Peter's like, in, the, in his head, he's like, wait, I can't do that. Because he knows Cornelius is a Gentile. He's not Jewish. Which means Cornelius spends his days eating ding-dongs and, and zebra cakes, and he's unclean. And, and if I, a Jew, go eat with, with him, then I'll be unclean. But then he remembers his dream. <laughs> And so he says, so yeah, I'll, I'll go eat with Cornelius. And he does. And then the next thing you know, it's like Pentecost all over again because the Holy Spirit came down and got a hold of all the Gentiles, Cornelius and his family in the room. And then Peter starts preaching and he's got a genuine revival on his hands. Like Gentiles are coming to Jesus left and right. And it's this beautiful thing to behold. It's so beautiful that word gets out about what's happening and it, soon it makes its way all the way to Jerusalem where all the early leaders of the Christian church are, the followers of Jesus, like the apostles, the ones who were there with Jesus when he told the parable of the prodigal son, the disciples are in this room and the very first people who had experienced the grace of God in Christ this unmerited favor of Jesus they got word and they were so overjoyed that these Gentiles were having the same experience that they were right no they were not this room full of younger brothers that had now become a room full of older brothers and when they saw Gentiles getting the same things that they thought were just for them, they cried, this is not fair. The very people who were in the room with Jesus when he told this story are like, Peter, you can't eat with them. They didn't have to go through what we went through. The Gentiles, they aren't the chosen people. We are. Their ancestors didn't have to wander in the wilderness. God didn't give them the promised land. He gave us the promised land. They didn't have to suffer what we've suffered. They didn't have to watch their Messiah, their Savior, their friend. They didn't have to watch Jesus die like we did. They don't even watch what they eat. <laughs> they don't even watch what they wear or observe the Sabbath, or pray at the temple. They don't do anything like that. And they think they can just have Jesus just like we do? They think Jesus died for them too? They think they deserve grace just like we do? That's not what. Fair. But thankfully, grace is not fair. This is what happened, if you, if you turn it, it's in Acts 11. This is what we read. Now, the apostles and the believers, the ones who were there with Jesus, who were in Judea, in Jerusalem, they heard that the Gentiles, the non-Jews, had also accepted the word of God. It's scandalous. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers, the Jews, they criticized Peter, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? The same thing the Pharisees said when Jesus was eating with them. Why did you go and eat with them, Jesus? And this is my favorite then Peter began to explain it to them. <laughs> I wish I was in the room to hear Peter explain <laughs> what happened, right? Peter explained his dream and how God told him to eat and that nothing is made, that God has made is unclean, not even the Gentiles. And so he ate with Cornelius, preached to them, and wound up baptizing them with water after the Holy Spirit had baptized them with the grace of God. And then Peter says to them, if then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who am I that I should hinder God? Who am I that I could get in the way of what God is doing in the life of somebody else. And when they heard this, the disciples, the first Christians, they were silenced. And then they praised God, saying, Then God has given, even to the, even to the Gentiles, the repentance that leads to life. Grace isn't fair. No one deserves it. But God offers it to everyone, 
Even you, even guys that are too old and too unhip to pull off earrings, dangle, dangle. <laughs> even guys that look like Ms. Doubtfire, God offers it to us. Christ died for us. And not so we can keep it to ourselves. Not so we can judge and decide who deserves it and who doesn't. Who's in or who's out, who's the table at the table and who's not. Grace means that there is room at the table for everybody. Everybody. And really, when we begin to think that, that we've earned something and someone else hasn't, or we begin to believe that we deserve what Christ did and someone else doesn't deserve it, when we begin to pout and refuse to sit at the table with certain other people and cry, it's not fair, we've become the older brother. And when we do that, we're actually no better than his younger brother when he took the money and ran. Because you see that moment when the older brother wouldn't come inside, that moment when the disciples criticized Peter for sharing the gospel with Gentiles, that wasn't about fairness. At the end of the day, that was about people using the rules they thought benefited them the most to keep the money for themselves. They may not have ran, but they were still focused. That older brother was still focused on what? The money. Because you invite my younger brother back, and all of a sudden I get less. It wasn't even about his, old, his love for his father. No. I mean, he betrayed his true self. For all these years, he's like, I've worked like a slave for you. For all these years, I've done what you asked. For all these years, I've followed the rules. I've come to church every Sunday. I put money in the offering plate on my way outside. You'll see it in the basket. Right? I forced my kids to come with me every Sunday. I've missed the first quarter of a Chiefs game here. Well, no, that's not that. But, right? I've read the Bible even when I have no clue what I'm reading. I've gone to potlucks even when I have no clue what I'm eating. I've prayed. I've helped. I've ushered while other people are out fishing. I've done all these things. Not because I loved you, though, but because, I, because of what I thought I would get in return that the other people wouldn't. And now you're telling me that this guy fishing on a Sunday, that he gets it too? And, and you're telling me that these guys get it? <laughs> Look what they look like on a Sunday, the Lord's Day. And if that guy can get it, then what's the point? Why did I bother at all? And that's when the father says, son, you've always been with me. You're always with me. You were never a part of me. You never had to know what it feels like to be separated. And everything that is mine is yours. It always has been right here for you. You're always with me. You've always been with me. You've always known my presence, my grace, my love, my hope, my peace. You've always felt my embrace around you. Not just when you came running back, but every day, my comfort and my joy. And my grace doesn't work like the things of this world. It doesn't run out. There aren't limits. My grace is abundant. Just because I pour out my grace on your younger brother doesn't mean there is any less grace for you. There's grace enough for all. There's room enough for everybody. There's even room for the ones who cry and pout and wail that it's not fair. There's even room enough for then. There's even room enough for the older brothers who try and keep other children out, who want it all for themselves. There's even room for them. And there'll be days when you feel like it's not fair. But there'll be days when you're grateful <laughs> that grace is not fair. There's room enough for everyone. That means you. That means me. That means them, whoever them is to you. 
there's room. Amen? Amen.